Hi guys, welcome. Um, we are Team 42 um, Loveless, and this is our preliminary design review. My name is Chris, um, and I'm the Acting Deputy Project Manager. My name is Annalisa Sussis, and the Lead Engineer. My name is Bridget Opperman, and I'm the Lead Scientist. My name is Nick Lynn, I'm the Lead Admin. My name is Rocco Sinto, and I'm a Computer Engineer on the Science Team. My name is Daisy Ruiz, and I'm part of the Engineering Team. My name is Monica Lyons, and I'm on the Engineering Team. My name is Aurelis Fuentes, and I'm part of the Administrative and Engineering Team. My name is Mayra Abdelaziz, and I'm part of the Science Team. My name is Randy Cabrera, and I'm part of the Science Team as well. My name is Andrew Brown, and I'm part of the Science Team as well. At the beginning of this project, as we were deciding a team name, I wanted to recognize a mathematician that pioneered programming and wrote the first computer algorithm. That was Ada Lovelace. Without her contributions to mathematics and programming, we would not be sending advanced machines into space to explore our solar system. So, in dedication to her contributions, we named this uh, Mars craft Ada in hopes that we too may forge a path to discovery as she did over a century ago. So, our task for this um, project is to design a small lander mission concept that would help to capture signs at one of the four sites that were used um, in the final contention for the Perseverance mission. And the constraints we needed to meet were that our rover needed to weigh less than 180 kilograms, um, fit within the dimensions of a 61 by 71 by 96 centimeter box, and satisfy the $100 million budget. In this presentation, we will explain our mission objectives and how we plan to accomplish them. So, in order to complete a large scale project as such, um, a lot of thought needs to go into planning and mapping out all the details. Um, and to keep track of time, we scheduled and documented the completion of each task using the scan chart. So, the goal of this mission is to explore, analyze, and document olivine rocks and serpentinites at Nili Fossi to better understand once formed habitable environment into a geologically recent time. Carbonates on Mars formed a few billion years ago when water interacted with olivine. Carbonates are significant in this project because in order to understand the fluvial activity areas, Mars must, have, must, must once have had a higher temperature to reach the temperature it's at today. We hypothesize that large amounts of carbon dioxide were, we turned in, were turned into carbonate deposits. Analyzing and experimenting with olivine through hydrothermal serpentinization can prove whether Mars once had biological activity. We will be using several payload instruments, including the Pixel, the ChemCam, the Microscopic Imager, and APXS to find and analyze Nelly Fossi's phyllosilicates carbonates, silica, and hydrous minerals. We were initially drawn to uh, this region of Mars and Nili Fosse because of its rich olivine deposits. But due to steep terrain, uh, we realized that it would be nearly impossible for us to get samples in some of those areas. So we kept searching the area, and due to uh, CRISM and Omega data, we did find one place that had several different samples within a very confined area. It contained phyllosilicates, carbonates, uh, silica, and other aqueous materials. And perhaps after our main ROAs are collected, Adam may push further into the Northwest to find the olivine deposits that intrigued us from the start. This mission will be using the three kilogram Rancor drill to obtain one centimeter in diameter and up to six centimeter in length samples of Martian rock cores for, get, for data gathering by the scientific instruments on the robotic arm. In order for the science instruments to analyze the rock cores, the Rancor drill will first drill into the Martian rocks where where it will then lay the pulverized core samples on the Martian floor. To avoid the occurrence of deliquescence, otherwise known as Martian honey, which is a gooey substance which occurs when there is too much heat and friction from the drill on Martian rocks, the rover will search for fine grain textured rocks. Additionally, the rover will seek out a flat surface for stability when drilling and collecting Martian rock cores for data gathering. To further analyze samples, we're using a couple other tools. The first one being the Pixel. It's called the Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry. We're using this one to gather certain ROIs like phyllosilicates and silica. By doing this, we're going to shoot an X-ray beam at the sample to excite the atoms within that targeted sample. And then we're going to use X-ray fluorescence to help detect the atoms and determine the elemental composition of the sample. From this, it's going to be possible to determine the presence of our ROIs in the soil, and this could help us determine the possibility of this area once having water. The next one would be the ChemCam. The ChemCam is similar, sim similar to the Pixel as it shoots a laser from a distance, but except this one, it vaporizes 
the sample, which it uses a spectrometer to measure the composition of the plasma that was created when that sample was shot with the laser. This is going to allow us to identify and verify the existence of all ROIs and if they're present in that given sample. The APX is an X-ray spectrometer used to identify geological minerals on the surface using X-ray radiation. The X-ray radiation allows the detection of invisible compounds to identify the following geological minerals. The microscopic imager is a high-resolution camera that gives a magnifying glass view of Martian rocks and soils. The following will be sought after. Potential facilitate host rocks in microtexture, silica at 30 micrometer squared per, per pixel in grayscale. The outer rover's initial descent to Mars will be very similar to most of the previous rovers. Its final descent will be most reminiscent of Pathfinder. It begins when it enters the atmosphere by correcting its angle, then it undergoes significant heating and slowing before deploying a parachute and injecting its heat shield. Once the rover detaches from the back shell, it begins a period of powered descent and comes to a soft landing on the Martian surface. The aero shell is composed of a back shell and a heat shield, both made of a honeycomb structure covered in a layer of an ablator. The heat shield has a thicker layer of the ablator and the back shell is coated in a thin, alumized blanket. On the aero shell are stored several small thrusters and at the top, the parachute is stored. So for the final stage of landing, the rover is accomplished with a power descent system, which utilizes the onboard landing radar and hydrogen thrusters. Um, and to ensure a soft and precise landing, a thrust vector control system guides the rover towards its final destination. The hydrogen monopropellant thrusters used in this project um, will be the same as the ones used on previous Mars missions. So the strength of our design lies in our space optimization. Um, as you can see, everything on the chassis of the rover is able to collapse in into a safe storage position, allowing for the entire system to fold up and fit inside the aero shell. Upon landing, um, it is able to unfold and go into its regular exploration position. So where the added, added rover mast differs from the other rovers is the points of articulation on the mast. Um, this mass allows for multiple combinations and arrangements by providing many points of articulation for the rover. Um, these images show the independent movement of the ChemCam. The solar panels on our rover will be able to rotate to, the follow, to follow the direction of the sun to ensure that we have the maximum amount of power at all times. The bottom of the solar panels will be lined with multi-layer insulation. In the event of a weather storm, the solar panels will move back up into a vertical position and protect the solar cells and the rover's instruments. The power generated from the solar panels will also charge and recharge the batteries inside the warm electronics box, which will house the electronics that control our rover's movement and instrument deployment. The rover's communication system will consist of three antennas, the ultra-high frequency antenna, the X-band high gain antenna, and the X-band low gain antenna. Since the UHF antenna sends its information to the Mars orbiters, it offers a faster means of communication between the rover and Earth. The X-band high gain antenna is a steerable, an steerable antenna so that the entire antenna does not have to the entire rover does not need to change position in order to come into contact with Earth, which will save time on the mission. The X-band low gain antenna is an omnidirectional antenna and provides low rate communication in cases of emergencies. The robotic arm is inspired by the previous iterations of rover arms, so we know it's a design that works. It features five ranges of motion. The shoulder azimuth actuator allows us to turn left and right while the shoulder elevation, elbow and wrist actuators go up and down and the turn actuator allows the tool hub to turn so that we can use either the MI, Ranker Drill, or APXS depending on the situation. The five degrees of motion allow us to articulate exactly what we need to do. To imitate the suspension abilities of previous rovers sent to Mars by NASA, the Ada rover will integrate a similar Rocky Bogey, bogey suspension system. The main advantage of, the, of this type of suspension system is that the load on each wheel is almost identical, which allows an equal distribution of force no matter where the wheels are positioned. Taking into consideration the harsh terrain found on Mars, this type of suspension system provides a better alternative to that of the common four-wheel drive soft suspensions found on most vehicles. Now for the wheel design, the Ada rover will make, a, make use of symmetrically placed cleats around the radius of the wheel in order to maintain traction. A taller wheel will allow the rover to traverse the Martian surface and let the pixel gather scientific data. However, it must be noted that ADA is unlike any other rover from previous missions because the pixel sits underneath the chassis. 
the rover may go over obstacles taller than the radius of the wheels to prevent damage to the instrument. The highest cost in the project are the instruments, followed by the materials and supplies, equipment, and the manufacturing margin. The total cost of the project lead us to an estimate of nearly 75 million. We use the NICM NASA instrument cost modeling to calculate our instrument costs. Our strategy minimizing the cost reflects our analysis of reality versus expectation within our mission objectives. Our team has high expectation on the rover, therefore we want to carry as many instruments as we can. However, we need to consider as a realistic safety margin in our budget. Some of the many tests that will be performed on the rover include testing the rover's ability to withstand intense shaking, extreme temperature, and complex terrain. To test the rover's ability to withstand intense shaking, the rover must undergo a process known as the shake and bake test. The rover will be placed inside its aeroshell and will be placed on a vibration table to simulate atmospheric, atmospheric entry. In JPL's space simulator facility, the rover will undergo solar th thermal vacuum testing, which will simulate extreme low and high temperatures ranging from negative 196 degrees Celsius to 93 degrees Celsius. In JPL's Mars yard, we will test how well the wheels will be able to hold up against a complicated terrain. In conclusion, we believe that the innovative and versatile design of the Ada rover allows for the most practical uses of modern day exploration technology. Team Lovely strives for a successful return of data from the Pixel, ChemCam, Microscopic Imager, and APXS to find phyllosilicates, silica, hydrous minerals, as well as the first mission to find carbonates on the surface of Mars. Thank you.